I uh, in, in 10 verses 24 times. And then he used the word me and my 10 more times. So we're looking 34 times in 10 verses. And what he was talking about is the fact, and it says in the book of James, how, how can sweet water and bitter water come out of the same fountain? And the truth is they're not coming out of the same fountain. There's two fountains in us. There's the fountain of life, if you're born again, the fountain of the life of Christ. And there's the fountain of death. There's two personalities in all of us. The world calls it multiple personality syndrome. But really what it is, it's, and matter of fact, there is a, a guy, and, and humanity has always recognized there's something wrong. There's a paradox in our hearts. There's something wrong in us because there's a part of us that really wants to do what's right, wants to be kind, sweet, understanding, forgiving, merciful, so forth and so on. But then there's a part of us that's wicked, evil. And matter of fact, back in 1885, there was a man who wrote a book called, uh, uh, he, he wrote about it, and, and literally it was, it was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You ever read that? You ever see that old black and white movie? Don't watch it. But, it, it, you know, there's this doctor who knew there was something wrong, and he wanted to divide the good from the evil, and he came up with some kind of biological chemical formula, and he partook of it. And you know what happened? The evil man took over and dominated. And that's why Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Now, what part of us that needs to be crucified? Well, uh, the part of us that is evil and how did that evil come into us through disobedience when man partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we became a duplicity a duplarity we became a paradox a contradiction because there's good but there's evil and even after you get born again there's that part of us that must be crucified that must die and, and you know and 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 what we want to look at tonight is we want to look at the subject a little bit of circumcision now, we realize there's a physical circumcision, which was given to Abraham in the Old Covenant. Uh, but really, it was a typology of a spiritual circumcision that must happen in your heart that will be manifested in your flesh. Notice, circumcision was in the flesh, made by the hands of a natural man. But the new circumcision is of the heart manifested in the flesh that all men can see. So let's go back there because Abraham was a friend with God. And let's take a look in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10. Well, actually, let's go back a little bit further. Go back here to Genesis chapter 17. Now, God had spoken to Abraham. This is after the flood. This is after the Tower of Babel uh, falls. And the human race is scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And there was a man by the name of Abraham who lived in, actually, his name was Abram. His name did become Abraham, but he lived in the city of the Chaldeans, and uh, he had a hunger for God. He had a desire for God, uh, and so what happened is he began to cry out to God, and then God began to speak to him. Uh, you know, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man open the door, I will come to him and sup with him and he with me. So God is always knocking on the doors of people's lives, knocking. And it's up to you if you want to open the door or shut it in his face. And the majority of the human race is shutting the door on the face of Jesus. But he's our only hope. He's our only answer. There is no other way to the Father but through him. He's the only one that can give us the ability to crucify the, the, the Mr. Hyde. The old man, the old nature. See, that man must die. That's what spiritual circumcision is, is the cutting away of the old man. It's the crucifying, and they that Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust thereof. So God has been leading and guiding Abraham, and one day the, the Spirit of God, you know, began to speak to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, verse 10. He said, this is my covenant, my contract, my agreement with you, Abraham, which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee every Man child among you shall be circumcised. No, no, I said, let's go to Genesis 17. First, I said Deuteronomy 10, and we will go there, but then go to, go, go to Genesis 17. And it says, he said, Abraham, every male child will be physically circumcised. And that's the most private part of your life, the, the productive part of your life, the part that the seed of man is coming forth from. You know, we're grown ups here. And it says you're going to have to cut the skin away from yourself and your, and your son and the, all the male descendants. And he goes a little bit further. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. 
and it shall be a token of the covenant. It will be a sign of the covenant betwixt me and you. For in which this is the symbol that you and I are friends. You got to cut away the flesh. Well, wait, wait a minute, God. Nobody, nobody else can see that I've cut away the flesh. Well, yeah, it's because it's between you and God. See, it's. So look what it goes to say here. He says, and he, that is, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man, child in your generations, he that is born in a house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs, must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh. Now get a hold of this. For an everlasting covenant an everlasting covenant what, what does that mean pastor mike you're going to have to physically circumcise to all generations yeah there is a physical circumcision through all generations now that physical circumcision is not in the new testament the physical cutting away of the foreskin okay uh but in the new testament Women and men must be circumcised. And we'll take a look what he means by that. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Now this was, this was way before Moses gave the law. Before Israel was delivered out of the land of Egypt, that was 450 some years later, if not longer. So we're, 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 he, he said this, that every child that is not circumcised will be cut off. Or in other words, they cannot partake of what God has for them. They will, be, they, will not be, they will not come underneath God's covenant protection. Remember when David went to face Goliath, the very first thing he said is, who is and it was a Philistine, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You had to be circumcised in order to partake of God's protection, of God's blessings, of God's provisions, of God's abundance, of God's forgiveness, of God's mercy. Yeah, you had to circumcise. And who does the circumcising? We do it. Notice we have to circumcise ourselves. Or those in leadership have to circumcise us. It's not a very enjoyable job. <laughs> it's not something I really want to do, you understand? And so notice what he goes on to say here. And jump down here in verse 22. And he left off talking with him. God got done talking. And God went up from Abraham. Now we know that was Jesus Christ. Jesus had come and spoke to Abraham. Matter of fact, he said about Abraham, he said, he saw my day and he rejoiced in it when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house and all that were bought with his money. Now, let's talk about that for a moment. See, what Abraham did, Abraham had a lot of wealth. You know what Abraham did? He didn't buy slaves for himself. He bought slaves out of slavery. They became his people. They became a part of the family. So he would buy, and actually, uh, uh, J, uh, uh, um, uh, e, not Esau, but Job did the same thing. He would buy people out of slavery with the wealth that God had given to him. You know, our job is to help bring people out of slavery and bondage to the, the world, the flesh, and the devil. So he says that he took all of those he had bought out of slavery uh, of Abraham's house, and he did what? He circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day as God had said unto him. For in words, the minute he heard the will of God, and of course he's 99 years old now. And the minute he heard the word of God, what happens to him? He does the word of God. See, that's what we got to do. We got to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And Abraham was 90 years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. How many know that probably wasn't very pleasant? Very painful, very nasty. 
And that's why it's better. It, it's, it, that's why the Bible says, raise up a child in the way he, in the way he should go. And when he's old, he, he'll not depart thereof. It's better to raise your children from little up into the things of God. Because if all of a sudden you just kind of let them go their own way. Now, I hate to say this. My older brother did this. I couldn't believe it. I led my older brother to the Lord. And, uh, you know, him and his wife had four children, two boys and two girls. One of them named after me, one named after my wife, Michael and Kathy, and then a Shirley and a Robert. And I noticed he wasn't raising his children in a godly way. And I said to him, I said, brother, why aren't you raising your children in a godly way? He said, oh, I want them to decide for themselves when they get older. Well, that's crazy. Because how many know the world's going to get a hold of them? And all of a sudden, you don't raise your children what, doing the will of God, obeying God, following God, serving God, and all of a sudden you expect them all of a sudden when they hit, what, 20, 30, 50, 60, I don't know. Oh, Jimmy, you need to be circumcised. What? Yeah, you're going to have to cut away the flesh. What? It is a, it's a shocker. It's going to be shocking. It's going to be painful. It's going to be hard. It's better to circumcise them when they're little. Then after they get older, they tell them they got to cut off the flesh. And, um, but it, it's insanity what we do because we think we're so smart. <laughs> and it says here, and uh, it says, and Ishmael and the son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son. And all the men of his house born in the house and bought with money of the stranger were circumcised with him. Now, you know, that physical circumcision was just a symbol, a type, a shadow. Because see, really what it's talking about is talking about the works of the flesh. It talks about disobedience to the will of God. That part of you, and I'm going to show you this is Old and New Testament. That part of you has got to die. It's got to be cut away. And how do we cut it away? With the word of God. See, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. He acted on the word of the Lord. And it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul of spirits, joints and marrows, and discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do what that means is the word of God comes and it begins to cut at you he all ever been cut by the word sure all the time when you pick up the Bible and God quickens it to your heart you go "Ooh, that hurts but yeah that's that's what I'm like yeah that's what I did yeah that's not that's not the will of God yeah that ooh, that hurts now some people when they get to begin to be cut by the word of God they run for the door you, and you can't strap them to the table and circumcise them they could run. He ain't cutting me. He ain't touching me. He ain't going to do that to me. And people run for the door. What do you do, Pastor Mike, if they start running for the door because they don't want to be circumcised? Well, I ain't going to have my boys knock them down and hold them till I get to them. You just got to let them go until they want to be circumcised. But until they're circumcised, they can't be a part of God's plan. Well, but Pastor Mike, they're Jews, aren't they? Spiritually speaking, because they're born again, they're Jews. No, 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 no. See, a Jew who was a, born, a child of Abraham, the seed of Abraham, it don't matter if he's the seed of Abraham, he still had to be circumcised. Now, this is very important. They still, matter of fact, what happened years later is the Jews stopped physically circumcising, and God said, you're going to find the you're going to get the same punishment the heathen get. I don't care if you are the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you're going to get the same punishment because I told you to cut away your flesh. And it don't matter if you're from the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob because you will not cut away their flesh. I will cut you off out of the land. See, the only ones who are are, are going to stand in the day of judgment are those who have been circumcised. So let's look, let's go a little bit deeper. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. And we're working our way into the New Testament. We're doing a real quick synopsis, a real quick look at circumcision. Physical, spiritual circumcision. Well, look what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14. 
very, very important that we, because we got to understand he's going to reveal to us now, of course, this is after Moses had brought down the Ten Commandments, and now Moses is reestablishing physical circumcision, and God is speaking to Moses to the children of Israel, which is a type and a shadow for us today. In verse 14, it says, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also with all that therein is. For in other words, just, he's the boss. Do what he says. Have you ever been in authority? And I'm not talking about blind obedience, but have you ever been in authority? You got people underneath you, and you know what you're doing. How many know that God knows what he's doing? And you try to, you try to tell some smart aleck, some young whippersnappers what to do, and all they do is give you grief. Just want to argue with you. You know, I mean, you've been doing this for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. You know what I'm saying? I, I know Brother Bill, he's been a truck driver for how many years, Brother Bill? Take a guess. 20 some years. And you get some young whippersnapper who wants a CDL and he gets in a cab with you. He gets behind the steering wheel and you begin to tell him what to do and how to do it. He argues and fusses with you. He won't listen. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to say, stop, put it in park, get out. Get out of the driver's seat because you're going to get us killed. You think you know what you're doing. I've been doing this for 20. How many know God knows what he's doing? I mean, he made everything. So I don't argue with the Bible. I, just, I might not understand it, but I just, okay, God. He, he, and he, God didn't, he didn't, Abraham didn't argue with God. He didn't say, well, God, what does this mean, physical circumcision? There's got to be something more to this. He just said, okay, God, he did it the same day. He said one day, he said, uh, Abraham, your son, Isaac, yeah. He said, take your only begotten son and take him up to Mount Moriah and put him on an altar and sacrifice him to me. Abraham never argued with God. But then he discovered years later by the spirit of revelation that it was a typology of God the Father giving his own son, Jesus. Of course, he didn't let him kill Isaac because it was a typology, okay? So there's a lot of, see, you understand, you ever use object lessons for little children? You know what an object lesson is? It's where you, 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 you do something physical in order to try to explain a spiritual thing. This is what circumcision is. It was an object lesson for little kids. And you must be as a child to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So Deuteronomy, he says, notice in verse 15, only the, Lord, only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Listen, verse 16, here is what it is. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. The foreskin of your heart, yeah, your spirit, your heart has a foreskin, has a layer of flesh wrapped around it. And you got to take the knife of the word and cut that foreskin off of your heart. What's it? Your, your, your will, your emotions, your attitude, your disposition, your thoughts, your desires. You have got, he says, cut that flesh off of your attitude. Cut that flesh off of your desires. Cut that flesh off of your, your, your will. He says, and be no more stiff neck. Okay, for in other words, when you haven't circumcised your heart, it's still what? My will be done. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'll go do what I want. I'll say what I want. I'll think what I want. I'll watch what I want. I'll be who I want to be. Well, guess what? You haven't been circumcised. You still haven't been circumcised. You, you gotta, that part of you has got to be cut off. Not my will, God. Not my will. But, Pastor Mike, it hurts. I know it hurts. And there's, there's, there's no anesthetics. There's no, there's no painkiller. It hurts. I mean, every day of my life, it seems like God's got to cut some more skin off of me. You know, some people say, no skin off my nose. Stiff neck attitude. But you know what? If you're not circumcised, you ain't going to make it. So we got preachers today telling masses of people sitting in the pews, God loves you no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter where you go, no matter. Hey, God this loves you. Well, okay, uh, that's no brainer. God is love. That's like saying, well, the sun is going to shine no matter what. Well, okay, but that doesn't help you. You've got to cut away the foreskin of your heart. Every one of us have to. So it's not just you and not me, it's me. 
See, it's what we call pulling the beam out of our own eye. Everybody is always on a crusade to change other people. I'm not. I'm just going to give people the truth and let them decide. Do you want to cut away the foreskin of your heart? It's up to you. Uh, look, look here in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. 30, verse 6. And then we'll jump to the New Testament and show you where the similitude is or the typology is. 30, verse 6. Well, we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time back here. Just we'll work our way forward. In, in, in Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Well, wait, I thought I'm supposed to circumcise my heart. Well, no, you understand, you really cannot circumcise your heart. It's you and God together. He said, take, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. So it's Jesus and me grabbing the knife of the word and cutting off the foreskin of my heart. Anything that is against his will. I'm going to cut this away. You know, it, it's, it's, have you ever seen, you know, this happened to me growing up. One day, my, my sister and I, Debbie, she, we got in a fight. She got so bad at me because I, I, I was, it's hard to believe I was such a little stinker. I would aggravate her and aggravate her to no end. I mean, I would go out of my way to aggravate her. And one day she got so mad at me, she grabbed up a big old butcher knife. I don't know if she was washing the dishes. And she started chasing me with this butcher knife. She said it was a scissors. A pair. I don't care if it was a scissors or a pair of butcher knife. All I remember is her taking whatever it was, and she was trying to stab me with it, you know. And I'm running for it, you know, because I wasn't going to let her circumcise me. Yeah, I mean, she was going to really go deep, you know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes... We get to chasing people, trying to circumcise them, and they're running for their lives. Because it's not our job. My job isn't to circumcise my wife, and her job ain't to circumcise me. I've got to decide, Lord, <laughs> help me circumcise. Help me, Jesus, because without you, I can do nothing. Jesus, I see this flesh hanging on my heart. I see the foreskin hanging on my heart, and it's nasty, and it's filthy, and it's dirty, and it's rotten. You know, and I need to cut it off. Help me now to cut that foreskin away. And it needs to be cut away. Because that's why Abraham could take the giant. He said, who is the uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the arms of the living God? And God is against the uncircumcised. Well, if God is against the uncircumcised, why doesn't he just wipe them out? Because he's long-suffering and he's kind. There's times I... I and, and here's what's scary. I know in the natural, the physical circumcision on a natural man cannot grow back, but in a, on, on spiritually, that foreskin can grow back. And you got to cut it away again. Have you ever had the foreskin grow back under your heart, the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things grow back on time your heart? And you got to take the knife of the word, and oh, it's going to hurt, and cut it away again. Oh, God, I am so sorry, God. Here I did it again. I said it again. I thought it again. I, God, I'm, am I the only one that has to go back and cut it away? I mean, it's like a weed growing in the garden. You pull it, but it tries to come right back, don't it? And that's why Paul said, I beat my body back and boo, lest I become a castaway. So he says, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed to what? To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Okay, so here's the problem. What stops us from loving God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength is we haven't circumcised the foreskin of our hearts. When we cut away the flesh, it'll be all for Jesus. Now, some people say everything they do is for Jesus, but everybody knows better. <laughs> but them, you know. Lord, this is for you. Lord, me driving this big old Rolls Royce is for you, Jesus. You know, me eating like a pig till I can't hardly move. It's for you, Jesus, because whatever I do, I'm supposed to do it as unto the Lord. No, it ain't for Jesus. You understand, man? We can say all kinds of stuff is for God, but it's just for us, you know. Yeah, I walk around with this $30,000 Rolex, and I walk around with these big old uh, three carat diamonds for Jesus, yeah. No, you're not doing it for Jesus. You're doing it for you, see. But you can fool yourself and people who want to be like you, but even the world knows better. 
That's not suffering for God, is it? Okay, so look there in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3 now. Just swing on about halfway through your Bible. And uh, in my Bible, it's uh, page 806. Actually, it's uh, 8 oh, well, 798. And that's if you have a, uh, if you have an authentic King James. No, I'm, it's not true. Look there in page 799, possibly closer. Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. In verse 3. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, listen, and sow not among the thorns. Now, this is almost a parable. Jesus said, a man went forth to sow seed, and some fell on the roadside, and the birds ate it up, and some fell in the, fellow, the shallow ground, and the sun rose up, and it did spring forth, but when it got real hot, it withered, and some fell among the thorns and the thistles, and it grew, but it didn't produce any fruit. And then some fell in the good soil. So he's telling the men of Judah, men of Judah, you need to break up your ground for the seed can go deep for you can have a harvest. Well, what is the breaking up of the ground? Verse 4, circumcise yourselves to the Lord. That's what getting rid of the thistles and the thorns and the weeds is. You've got to circumcise yourself. You've got to look at your life and see if you're in the faith and say, you know what, God, that's not your will and that's not. That attitude, that bitterness, that resentment, that anger, that non-commitment, that this, 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 this. Man, Lord, there's a lot of flesh to cut. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. I'm going to be a bloody mess when I get done. But that's what I've got to do. I, I've got I've to cut. You know, like when somebody gets bit by a rattler, snake, or a copperhead, they say, you know, I've never had to do it, that you got to put a tourniquet on you, and you got to stop the blood from flowing, and you got to take a knife, and you got to cut your flesh, and you got to suck that poison out of you. It may, it may hurt, but it's going to save your life. Well, there's things that in your life you got to cut away. You know, uh, you can't be bitter at people. You can't not forgive them because he says if you do not forgive neither will I forgive you so you got to cut that away I mean if you got unforgiveness in your heart towards anybody no matter what they've done to you you got to forgive them and not just say father forgive me for not forgiving them no I still didn't deal with it you got to forgive them you see what I'm saying that's like saying you know you're a thief and you keep stealing and you go oh God please forgive me for stealing but thank you for the big wad of money in my pocket I just took you got to give that money back. Hello? I mean, wouldn't that be wonderful if you and I could rob a bank and then when we drove away as we robbed the bank, you know, not Bonnie and Clyde, but Mike and Kathy, we drive away. No, my wife says, no way. I agree with you, baby. I agree with you. I'm just trying to use the illustration. My wife said, I ain't joining you, dude. I'm not doing it either, okay? You drive away. You know, oh, Father, forgive me for stealing that million dollars, but thank you. I'm forgiven. I sure can use it. No, you got to give it back. Or you're not forgiven. So notice what it says here. It says, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among the thorns. Circumcise. Circumcise your neighbor. No, circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskin of your hearts, you men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my Fury, my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. For in other words, you will continue to do evil as long as you do not cut away the foreskin of your heart. You got to cut it away. You got to do it. Or are you just going to keep on doing the stupid stuff you've been doing? You got you to cut it away. But Pastor Mike, it hurts. Hello, I know it hurts. It's a good hurt. You ever have a good hurt? You know, like when you begin to physically work out and, and, and it begins to hurt, but it's a good hurt. There is no pain, gain without pain, they say, in that physical exercise. And I, I don't know much about that, but not lately, I don't. Okay, look there in, Deut in, in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 26, and then we'll jump to the Old New Testament. We're just trying to cover the subject of circumcision in the New Testament. Circumcision in the New Testament. It's amazing. I, I say this in, in humility. 
a lot of the teachings we do, it's all in the Bible, but I don't hear a lot of it being taught today in the modern day church. You're not hearing this teaching. Why? Why would you teach circumcision if you are not circumcised? You're not going to. Why would you preach holiness if you're not living holy? Why would you preach commitment if you're not being committed or you're not striving to be committed? So look what it says here in Deuteronomy, I mean Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 26. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the uttermost cor corners that dwell in the wilderness, for all these nations are uncircumcised. Now, did you notice in the name of all the heathen nations, Egypt, Edom, Moab, Ammon, is the name of Judah. Well, Judah was of the tribe of Jesus. That's where Jesus came. One of the sons of, of, uh, of, of, um, of Jacob, Israel. Judah. Judah's not, sir, but they were circumcised one time. I know, but they're not now. You can be circumcised one time in your heart, first get saved. Yes, Lord, yes, I will obey, I will follow, I'll do your will. But the foreskin grows back upon your heart. The cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life grow back. What do you got to do? You got to get recircumcised. I think sometimes spiritual circumcision is like shaving, amen? You know, yeah, men and women shave, don't they? Well, some women don't. Amen. But <laughs> we shave our face. How many know you have to shave more than, well, at least maybe once a week or something like that? Yeah. How many know you got to keep on cutting off the flesh, don't you? Bad attitudes, wrong ideals. And you see other people, they don't care, man. God loves me. <laughs> I don't care. I can live how I want, do what I want, say what I want, go where I want, watch what I want, and God loves me. Yeah, but the problem is you're not circumcised. So you're not one of his. Well, I'm born again. You're saying I'm not born again. You're saying I can't speak in tongues. I'm not saying that. I said that's not good enough. you got to be circumcised. It wasn't good enough. You just had the blood of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in your, in, they could do a DNA test. Yeah, he's got the blood of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's a Jew for sure. Don't matter. you got to be circumcised. As a believer, you have got to be, I'm going to show you this. You have got to be circumcised. You've got to cut away your flesh. And I'm not chasing you with the knife of the word trying to cut away your flesh, man. It'll get nasty. I'm not chasing you. I'm not knocking you down. I'm not cutting it away. That's between you and God. Amen. I'm so glad God didn't tell me I had to do that. Whew. And notice what it says here. For all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel. That means all of the 12 tribes are uncircumcised in the heart. For in words, they had physical circumcision, but their hearts had never been circumcised. Your heart's got to be circumcised. Say, my heart has got to be circumcised. It's got to be. A lot of, there's going to be a lot of people shocked, and there's, there's, been a, there's been millions of people who said they were Christians. They died, and they didn't go to heaven. And if they could have a conversation with God, but now here's the strange thing. When a person dies without loving God, serving God, obeying God, they plummet right into hell, and God never tells them why they didn't make it. They're just there. Why am I here? I know when I went there, I heard them screaming, oh, God. Now, they knew they did wrong. They knew they had sinned, but they didn't totally understand what it was about. Uncircumcised in heart cannot go to heaven. You must be circumcised in heart. You've got to cut away the flesh. I'll prove it to you. Look there in Romans, please. Now, the New Testament really begins to deal with the subject of circumcision because, see, when Jesus came in the fullness of time, the Jewish leaders were so proud and, 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 and haughty and, 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 you know, they just walked around like peacocks and we're righteous, we're holy, we're this, we're that. And, and Jesus said, hey, you're the blind leading the blind. You're self-centered, self-loving. You're a bunch of thieves. You're a bunch of liars. You're a bunch of backstabbers. He said, you've turned my house into a den of thieves. You know, a lot of churches, I'm not going to judge them. They're a den of thieves. All they're after is people's money. They don't care about their hearts. They don't care about their souls. They just want their money. Cough it up and I'll pray for you. God, I heal you then. No, no. 
Freely you have received, freely give. Isn't that what the Bible says? But look what it says here in Romans chapter, did I say chapter 3? Well, we'll look there. Look in Romans chapter 2, first of all. Verse, in chapter 2, verse 25. And there's a lot of talking about circumcision because Paul is deal, dealing with the, the circumcision. He's dealing with the Jewish people who have received physical circumcision. Now the Gentiles are being saved. The Jewish people are trying to get the Gentiles to be physically circumcised, telling them you've got to be physically circumcised to be right with God. And Paul has to come against this doctrine because it's not physical circumcision that saves you. It was a type and a shadow. As a matter of fact, in verse 25, for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. For which he says to the Jewish people, listen, if you're physically circumcised, you've got to still keep the law. Doesn't mean if you're physically circumcised, you don't have to obey God, Romans chapter 2, verse 25. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made on circumcision. For which, if you're physically circumcised and you don't obey God, your, your circumcision doesn't mean spit. Can I say that? I just did. Doesn't help anything. They thought, hey, I'm physically circumcised, man. I'm good to go. Let's go party. He said, no, man, I told you not to do that. So your physical circumcision is like you don't have it. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. Verse 28, here we get. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. Huh. In the spirit, and not of the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. For in other words, you're cutting away the flesh of your heart, not because you can be seen for your good do deeds among people, because it says what in 1 Corinthians, if you give your body to be burned, if you feed the poor, if you have faith to move a mountain, if uh, you're burned at a stake and you have not love, it doesn't mean nothing. It's for the love of God. You're really doing it for God. You're saying, God, you don't want me to do this. You don't want me, and he gives us a whole list of things that are wrong. He says, you don't want me to do this. You don't, okay, God, I'm going to cut this away. Okay, my attitude stinks, God. The way I talk to my wife, the way I talk to my children, the, the things I watch, the things I do. Okay, God, it, it's, it's against your will. I'm going to cut it away by your grace, by your life, by your nature. I'm going to do this. Jesus, help me do it because you can't do it in yourself. Jesus, help me do this, and he'll help you, won't he? Call on to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Says to submit yourself to God, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. So he is a Jew who is circumcised in the heart, in the spirit, or by the spirit, and, and not by some legalistical thing, whose praise is not a man but of God. So you've got to be circumcised. Look what it says here in chapter 3, verse 9, verse 29. Chapter 3 of Romans, verse 29. Is he the God of the Jew only? Is he not also the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and on circumcision through faith. What is that talking about? It means it doesn't matter to God whether or not we're physically in a personal private areas of our life, physically if Pastor Mike is physically in a natural circumcised or not. What he's looking at is the circumcision of the heart. Have I been circumcised in my heart? Is my heart circumcised? Have I cut away the flesh? How would I do that? By the Spirit of God. See, that's what I said. When I got born again, I didn't, I didn't get involved in the church right away. Not right away, because on a little island I was on, I didn't know anything about going to a church. But right away, the Spirit of God circumcised. I circumcised myself with the Word of God. Three and a half packs of cigarettes. Just, you know, these are things I got. God delivered me from. The cigarettes, 
the chewing tobacco, the cussing, the swearing, the pornography, the alcohol, the drugs, the rock music, the cussing, the swearing, the, the fights, the hate. I mean, these are things that God just poof, circumcised, cut it off. Poof. I was, became a new creature in Christ Jesus. It's like a seed must fall into the ground and the outer shell breaks off and then the inner life comes forth. That's Jesus. He comes. See, as long as you don't circumcise your flesh, the Jesus in you cannot come forth. It's, it's got to be circumcised. And, and how do we do that? By looking to Jesus. Look there in Ephesians chapter 2. We'll take a look at two more sets of scriptures tonight. You learning anything? There's got to be a circumcision. There's got to be a circumcision in your life. But Pastor Mike, I don't know people who are really circumcising themselves. I know. I know. First of all, why would people circumcise themselves if, if you didn't? You know, Abraham was a true prophet of God. Did you know the Bible says Abraham was a prophet of God? That prophet of God went to the people, his family members and those who were with him. He says, God appeared to me, the God of the great I am, Jehovah. And he told me, I've got to be circumcised. And you've got to be circumcised. And my children have got to be circumcised. Now, you can believe me as a prophet of God, or you can reject what I have to say. And they believed him, and they were circumcised. But if Abraham would not have told those people, you have to be circumcised, none of them would have been circumcised, and they would have all been outside of the will of God. Because the leadership didn't tell them they had to be circumcised. That's what's going on in America. We've got leaders who are not telling the people, you still must be circumcised. Pastor Mike, it ain't physical, though. It is physical. It's first spiritual, and then it's physical to the extent that you won't do the things you used to do anymore. Because you've been circumcised. Look what it says here in chapter 2, verse 1. And you had the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead in the uncircumcision of your flesh. And matter of fact, that's what it says here in verse 11. Wherefore, remember that you being in times penchiles in the flesh, who are called on circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. You were called the uncircumcision. You were the uncircumcision because you had not yet been quickened by the Spirit and you were not yet free from the works of the flesh. It goes on back there in verse 2. Where in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. In times past, you did what they did. You drank what they drank. You swore what they swore. You watched what they watched. You acted like how they acted. They acted like idiots. You acted like an idiot. Y'all ever been there? I've been there. Do you ever act like an idiot anymore, Pastor Mike? Well, circumcise your own heart. <laughs> you ever? <laughs> I have the ability to act like a complete, total idiot. Did my wife say amen? I do. Go ahead, baby. Help circumcise me. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Because this is the old flesh. The old flesh rises up. Keep your hands off me. I'll circumcise myself. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're right. You do got to circumcise yourself. You know what? Hey, there's some people I'd like to take a knife to in the circumcision. I'm talking about, you know what I mean? It ain't going to help nothing. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay. Look what it goes on to say here, and it says, among whom also we all had our conversation. Well, it says, it, it says, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power there, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So an uncircumcised heart, listen to me, is a disobedient heart, and whom the prince of the power of the air can still work in. See, that's why it says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. See, the devil can keep messing with you and using you as long as you're disobedient because you won't circumcise your heart. 
And you go, God, I don't understand. You know, sometimes problems happen to us because we're in the will of God, but a lot of times problems happen to us because we're out of the will of God. Can you imagine you're driving down a road and a police officer pulls you over? He comes up to your car door. You take your fingers and you go, I rebuke you, I rebuke you, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. This is nothing but of the devil. And the officer looks at you and he gets on his walkie-talkie, his phone, he says, excuse me, could you bring the paddy wagon out here? We got a... We got a loose nut here. Uh, Sir, why are you telling me I'm of the devil? Because you're giving me a speeding ticket. Well, yeah, but you were doing 65 in a 25 mile hour zone. Well, you're still of the devil. No, no. You didn't circumcise your flesh to obey the 25 mile an hour speed limit. And now you are under the principality of the power of the air. And now you're in trouble. See, it's funny how people blame the devil for stuff that they've done. This is the devil. No, it was you. You didn't live right. You didn't think right. You didn't walk right. You didn't circumcise your flesh. That went over like a lead balloon. Among whom also all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh. There it is, the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in his mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. What is grace? Grace is the quickening of the Spirit of God in you that gives you the ability ability to what crucify the flesh circumcise yourself you know that's why that's why that's why uh, Paul said by the grace of God I am what I am see people think the grace of God's God's mercy I'm under grace I'm under grace I'm under grace they don't even know what the word means the Greek word means charisma or charisma or divine ability the grace of God comes in and gives me the ability to take the word of the Lord and to begin to circumcise the flesh of my heart the foreskin of my heart just I begin to kill the enemy like Abraham or like the patriarchs of old when they went in and took on the Philistines or like, like, like Samson when he grabbed the jawbone of a donkey and he killed a thousand Philistines by the Spirit of God. So I come along with the Word of God and I begin to just rip the hell out of me. Can I say that? I just did. Rip the hell out of me. Cast out the devil. Tell them to take a hike. No, no, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to act this way. I'm, I'm going to be a loving father, a good husband. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to help. Yeah, okay. Colossians chapter, chapter, um, chapter 2, verse 10. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And, of course, in, in chapter 1, verse 13, it says, He's delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And in chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Jesus, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made us show them openly triumphing of them in it. So Jesus has already won the victory for us, okay? And you are completed in him, which is the head of principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, what is the circumcision? You are circumcised with the circumcision made with our hands. What is the circumcision, Pastor Mike? I'm glad you asked. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. That is the circumcision. You have put off. It says put off the old and put on the new. You have put off the works of the flesh. How? By Christ. How? And this is called what? What is this called? It says, by the circumcision of Christ. The circumcision of Christ is crucifying the old man. And we've all got to be circumcised. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with them, having forgiven you all trespasses. Well, Pastor Mike, I confess my sins and I'm forgiven. Let me tell you something right now. If you, if you confess your sins, right, but you haven't cut away that sin, you're not forgiven. 
You've got to cut away. To be forgiven for a sin, you must turn your back on it. I mean, like I said, I, I mean, it, it, it's like me saying, you know, it's, you know, me being a liar or a thief or, a, or something stupid. Being, and I say, oh, oh, God, you know, for, God forbid, if, 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 and I'm not, my father abused my mother. But if I was a wife beater, can you imagine me? And, of course, my wife would never put up this. If I grabbed a hold of my wife and I'm slapping her. Oh, God, forgive me for abusing my wife. Oh, God, forgive me for abusing my wife. How I many you know I would not be forgiven as long as I'm physically abusing her? You can't be forgiven from something you don't stop doing. And that's why you have the quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. You got to repent. You got to look to Christ, Jesus in you. You circumcise your heart, the circumcision of Christ. Now you're free. And I go, oh God, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have watched that. I shouldn't act like, Father, I repent. Now I circumcise my heart. I'll not do that again. You hear me, devil? I'll not do that again. I'll not do that again. In the name of Jesus, I come against you. In the name of Jesus, I put you down. In the name of Jesus, I crucify you, flesh. I'll not do that again. And then you're forgiven. Boom. Well, what if I do it again, Pastor Mike? You need to repent again and cut it off again. Because the Bible says a righteous man will fall, but he'll get back up. You can end up doing stupid things you got free from years ago. Been there and done that. So what do you do? You got to circumcise your flesh. Every soul, he told Abraham, this is an everlasting covenant. You must circumcise. This is a sign in your flesh. How do you, how, how, Pastor, what do you mean in your flesh? By their fruits, you will know them. By their works, you'll know them. Now, people are going to lie about you. They lied about Jesus. They said he was a wine bibber. He was a friend of the publicans and the harlots, and they implied things. They were lying. People are going to lie about you as long as you know you're not. You ever been accused of stupid stuff you know? I mean, I've done enough stuff they could accuse me of, you know, <laughs> but they always accuse me of things I've, ne I, I've never done. I go, wow, that's news to me, really? I, I did what? You know, oh, wow, you know? I mean, the township for years ago, remember, you all remember David Koresh? Uh, and David Koresh, he's the guy who, you know, and, and uh, you know, had a bunch of wives and had guns and everything else, and they accused him. Of, and I had the township come to me, too. The guy said, we know all about, because I, I built that goofy house up on the hill of Dome, a golf ball house. And they came to me one day, too. The supervisor says, we know all about the guns you got hit up there. I started laughing. I said, really? I didn't even own a gun. I said, really? <laughs> I said, that's news for me. I said, hey, anytime you want to come and look in there, you can. They never did come. It's not against a lot of own guns anyways. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we know about those guns. Well, you just laugh at that kind of stuff, right? But there's other things people could accuse me of, and I would have to go on. Oh, I know it. What things, Pastor Mike? You better circumcise your heart, you naughty thing, you. Says a wicked man digs up the sins of another. Amen. I'm not in your backyard late at night digging up your, in your yard, man. <laughs> Let the dead dogs lie, you know. That's between you and Jesus. I mean, I have people try to come to me and even tell me their sins. I say, whoa, hold on, I'm not a priest. Don't con confess them to Jesus. Even when I counsel people, they want to, you know, it's amazing when you counsel a husband or wife sometimes. The husband wants to bring up what the wife's done and the wife wants to bring up what they, and instead of what they're supposed to actually do is be talking about what they've done. And I really don't want to know what they've done. <laughs> just, it's better just to, you know. I heard, and it will close here, but I heard, uh, how many know who John Osteen was? His son, Joel, is. John Osteen, he was at uh, our Bible college preaching one time, and he said, yeah, because he's talking to ministries, he said, let me tell you something. He said, if you ever do something wrong, he said, you've got to have the same mentality I do. He said, you go to God, you repent of it, you confess it, you deal with it in your heart. He said, and if I really had to tell somebody, he said, I would go into the backside of the desert, I would find a jackrabbit. I would hold that little jackrabbit in my arms and confess my sins to the jackrabbit, put the jackrabbit down, pull out my pistol and shoot him in the head. That's what John Osteen said. said, now I'd feel good. I confessed my sins to something. And, you know, he was just being a smart aleck. All he's saying is, listen, there's things we tell people we should never tell people. Do you know that? Because you know what? Most people, most, matter of fact, a naughty heart wants to hear naughty stuff. A naughty heart. 
gets big ears. Yeah, let me hear, let me hear. What did you say about so and so? What did they do? No, that's a wicked heart. I don't want to. I don't want to know what so and so has done. Hello. Now I know in leadership we got to protect the pulpit. I understand that. Amen. Did 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 you get something tonight? Give the Lord a hand clap in the shop. Come on. <laughs> Maybe we should call this bl- Bloody Sunday. <laughs> Man, because you, you know what you got to do now, don't you? You, you know what you're going to have to do? You, you, you know, spiritually speaking, you're all going to be walking like this all week long. <laughs> no, I'm being serious, man. I mean, you're going to have to go cut away the flesh, man. You're going to, well, Pastor, do you have to get so graphic? Listen, it is a very graphic, listen, it is graphic. You know why? He wants us to know how serious this thing is. It is serious, isn't it? Amen. 